Hello, and thank you for listening to the Testing with Spirits podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the 11th commandment. That's right, the 11th commandment. Some of you are thinking right now, wait a minute, I don't think there is an 11th commandment. There's only 10 commandments. Well, that's true in the Bible, there is no 11th commandment. But trust me, there are people out there who go by this rule and they're willing to, if not condemn you, they're willing to pass judgment on you because you're violating this fake rule, the 11th commandment. And not only is it a fake rule, a fake commandment, it's not biblical, it's actually the opposite of what the Bible says. So what is the 11th commandment? Basically, it's thou shalt be nice. You know, this is what a true Christian is. A true Christian never says a bad word about anybody. A true Christian is always polite. Said no verse ever. Matter of fact, I mean, you could point to Jesus and Matthew 23. Uh, He wasn't exactly being polite to the Pharisees when he called them a brood of vipers. You're, you know, you're a whitewashed wall and all the rest. Or when Paul uh, called the false prophet, you know, a child of the devil. And (laughs) I mean, they weren't exactly being nice or polite. Now, anyone who knows me knows that 99% of the time when I'm dealing with people in everyday life, situations like that, you know, whether it's the clerk at the grocery store or, you know, anybody, it doesn't matter. I am almost always polite and I go out of my way to be nice. So here's the thing. I actually feel like I am following this probably as good, if not better than many people, if not most. But when it comes to YouTube or in my preaching, Uh, It's true, I sometimes tackle controversial subjects. I do say things that apparently ruffle people's feathers. Um, But I think that this idea that I'm doing something wrong, um, I'm violating the 11th commandment, I mean, it's just, it's totally bogus. And I think that the 11th commandment could be, or maybe this could be the 12th commandment, thou shalt never name names. Somebody left a comment, and this is kind of the catalyst for why I'm doing this podcast. Maybe this is a little more of a rant than uh, examining what the scripture says, although we will compare everything to scripture because that's what this podcast is all about. But somebody left a comment a few days ago and they said, you know, I'm I'm unsubscribing from your channel because you said something negative about Kenneth Copeland and you know, you're just being critical and I'm I'm not watching your videos anymore, which how much sleep did I lose over that about zero seconds (laughs) of sleep? And somebody asked me, does it bother you when people leave negative comments? And I said, no, it does not bother me at all. Now, I don't, I don't like it. I mean, I don't like thrive on it or something. I want, I'm going to just say something to get negative comments. No, I don't do that. But does it bother me? No, not at all. Now, if somebody I knew, if somebody I knew personally came to me and had, you know, something that I said offended them, I, w- I would take that seriously. And that type of thing could bother me. If it was someone I respected, if I really felt like I did something wrong, yeah, I'm like, how did I miss that? You know, it's like I did something wrong. It didn't even realize it. How did I, that would maybe bother me a little bit, but some stranger leaving a comment, especially if their comment isn't rooted in scripture or it's anti-biblical, no, it doesn't bother me at all. So this person left a comment, said, I'm unsubscribing from the channel because you said something negative about the video I did about Kenneth Copeland, I mentioned Benny Hinn as well, and I called them, I don't, well, false teachers, heretics. And here's the thing, they are heretics. They are false teachers. And I'm just doing what the apostles did. Um, the apostles addressed false teaching. I mean, you say, well, you talk about it an awful lot, too much. Well, that's what this podcast is all about, okay? Some people have a podcast where they're talking about sports. And nobody ever, you know, chimes in and says, you guys talk about sports too much. Well, that's what the podcast is about. So that's what this podcast is about, uh, addressing false teaching and false doctrine. Now, 
Did I mention it in last week's sermon? No, I didn't. There are plenty of sermons where I don't mention it, but I do mention it on a consistent basis because it is a major theme in the Bible. Every New Testament book deals with the subject of false teachers, except for the book of Philemon. So yeah, I'm talking about it. And yes, I do name names. But because I'm saying, hey, this guy, what he did was wrong or what she said was wrong, well, you're just being critical. No, I'm testing the spirits. I'm doing what 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 says I'm supposed to do. As a pastor, that's my job. And a lot of people left comments. I did a YouTube short and they left comments like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's your job to do stuff like this. But some people get upset. Why? Because I broke the 11th commandment. I wasn't being nice to Kenneth Copeland. Well, what do they want me to do? They want me to just remain silent while he is off scamming people. You know, I should never say anything. Well, I'm just going to show you a little clip just to show you why I have this righteous indignation within me, why false teachers make me upset. I'm just going to play this clip. This is from the channel Learn to Discern. I think the guy's name is, is Matt, who runs the channel. But here's a clip from that showing that Paula White is clearly scamming people. Just watch this clip, or if you're listening on Spotify, listen to it. Remember, Purim is the 23rd of March at sundown and the 24th. That is a very holy time. It's one of the times that God says, hey, stop, halt. This is a holy time. This is my calendar. And it's one of those times God says, honor me. Don't stand before me empty handed. Just like Queen Esther, God is putting you in position for favor. You have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Call, write, or go online as you sow a ministry gift today of $52 or more. Standing on Esther 5-2, Esther approached the king and touched the tip of the scepter. We will. I mean, <laughs> what in the world does this mean, guys? I mean, I'm standing on Esther 5-2. Then Esther approached the king and touched the tip of the scepter. What does that mean? I'm standing on that. I, I mean, seriously, that I'm going to go touch the king's scepter? What king are you talking about? What scepter? What does this accomplish? What, what, what does this mean? This is drawing some sort of significance out of nothing. But no, you, got, you have to sow your ministry gift. $52 or more if you want to stand on this in your life. This is ridiculous. We'll rush to you Paula's powerful three CD series, Esther, Come to the Kingdom. Plus, you will also receive this beautiful custom for such a time as this scepter pin. With your ministry gift of $123 or more, standing with Israel for Genesis 12:3. I will bless those who bless you, Israel. You will also receive this incredible I Stand with Israel certificate with your name signed by Paula, suitable for framing. For I mean, <sighs> it's good if you want to stand with Israel, but if... if if you want to stand with Israel, do you need a certificate from Paula White that says so? Do you need to send her $123? No, it's a part of the scam. Those Esthers that the Lord is speaking to, so a generous gift of $414 or more. For Esther 414, Paula will be praying favor over you, touching and agreeing with your name on her desk all year. Call, write, go online, or text to give and stand with Israel. Activate favor for your life today. Incl okay, you saw it right there, guys. Esther 414, do you want that anointing? Do you want God's favor? Send Paula White 414 or more dollars. And at the very end, the person who was reading the infomercial, he said, when you do so, Paula's going to pray over it and it's going to activate favor in your life. So if you send 414 or more dollars to Paula White, favor is going to come upon your life. This is what Paula White does, guys. She scams people. Okay, now... I'm going to name names. I'm going to break the 11th commandment or the 12th commandment. Uh, Paula White is a con artist. It is so obvious. She is so clearly twisting the word of God. She says, you know, God says this about Purim. Like God never said any of that stuff. And then she's really just trying to get your money. And the whole thing is made up. It's all one big scam. Why does that bother me? Because I actually know people who have sent in money have been taken advantage of people that have basically made shipwreck of their faith because they started listening to false teachers. This is personal for me because when I was younger, when I first started reading the Bible and going to church, 
I wanted to learn more. So I turned on the TV and I started listening to the preachers on TV. Nobody warned me. And I was kind of, I don't know, I was a little upset that a few years in, once I was, you know, these fake televangelist types almost had their hooks in me and I had to figure it out for myself. Thankfully, I came across a John MacArthur sermon or some something he did, but that was on YouTube and it kind of, uh, I, I woke up to, okay, wait, what John Hagee is saying is not right. What Billy Graham said to Robert Shuler is not right. And that was a real eye-opening experience. But uh, I, I wonder, why didn't anyone tell me? I was being led astray, and it's like nobody warned me. Make no mistake about it. This is a fake commandment. The 11th commandment, thou shalt be nice. What are they saying? Don't ever say anything about this stuff. Just you know, zip your mouth, keep quiet, don't say anything negative, and certainly never name names. And again, that is not biblical. The apostles, again, false teaching, major theme throughout the New Testament. I mean, Moses called it out. Jeremiah called it out. Jesus called it out. Paul called it out. John, Peter, they called it out. The apostle Paul named names, Hymenaeus and Philetus. John named names. He called out Diotrephes. Jesus called out King Herod. I mean, the, this is what you do. So if I did a video saying something about Kenneth Copeland, how he's conning people, I mean, he is. Paula White, that video. I mean, I show you. I, here's the thing. Whenever I say something, and, and Billy Graham is probably the one, the one guy who's supposedly untouchable. I mean, this is like a, Billy Graham is like a sacred cow to many people. There's like, this would be what, the 11th commandment, 12th commandment, thou shalt not name names. This would be, I guess, the 13th commandment, thou shalt never disagree publicly with Billy Graham or something like that. You know, I did a video and somebody said, oh, well, why are you running Billy Graham's name through the mud? Well, I'm not running his name through the mud. Uh, I'm disagreeing with something that he did or something that he said. I mean, you're disagreeing with me right now, something that I'm saying. So what's the difference, right? But Billy Graham, I mean, the, the, the main issue that I've talked about this on the channel many times, his interview with Robert Shuler, when he basically said, well, let's just play the clip. Well, I think there's the, the, the body of Christ, which comes from all the Christian groups around the world or outside the Christian groups. I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And I don't think that we're going to see a great sweeping uh, revival that will turn the whole world to Christ at any time. I think James answered that, the Apostle James, in the first council in Jerusalem when he said that God's purpose for this age is to call out a people for his name. Mm -hmm. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world. Uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus, but uh, they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have and they turn to the only light that they have. And I think that they are saved and that they're going to be with us in heaven. Okay, so there you go. I'm not running Billy Graham's name through the mud when I say that, hey, what he told Robert Shuler is not biblical. Not only that, not only is it not biblical, and I had a conversation with a, a deacon years ago. This is something that I've noticed in our local pastors meeting. A group of us gets together once a month. Any, anyone who heard what Billy Graham said, anyone who heard that would agree, that's false. If that's really what he meant, that's false teaching. See, everyone would, would agree with that. But yet, if you just say, well, Billy Graham's guilty of false teaching, then you've broken the 13th commandment. It's like, well, yeah, but you, you agree that that's wrong. But because it's Billy Graham who does it, then it's okay. You're not allowed to say something. Uh, and when I bring this subject up, say at a pastor's meeting, I'm not the one who brings up Billy Graham. Someone else will bring up Billy Graham. One time somebody mentioned his name and they said, oh, well, no one could ever criticize Billy Graham. I'm like, well, there's that Robert Shuler interview and another pastor said, stop, stop. 
this is very dangerous, he said. Should never say anything about Billy Graham. And like, it, is what I'm doing dangerous or is what Billy Graham, is what he did dangerous? Because he went on live TV and in front of millions of people said that there's many paths to God. But what I'm doing is dangerous because I'm disagreeing with it. I never said that Billy Graham was not saved. I never made some like claim where I'm trying to play God. I'm saying, here's what Billy Graham says. Here's what the Bible says. I disagree. And, and the weird thing is almost everybody I've ever talked to, they agree with me in principle. They just don't think I should say it out loud. My friends, that makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. Uh, so this has been the case uh, time and time again. It's like with the Catholic Church. Somebody say, well, stop bashing the Catholic Church. I'm not, I'm not bath bashing the Catholic Church. I disagree with the Catholic Church. And here's the thing. Again, you talk to people and say, uh, do you agree with the Catholic uh, statement about the Virgin Mary, uh, about praying to Mary? Uh, they say the gospel is faith plus works. Do you agree with that? No, no, no. See, everyone you talk to in private, they admit that, well, it's a false gospel. It's, it's horrible that people are praying to Mary. Yes. They, I mean, they, they agree with everything I'm saying. Yet when I say it in a public setting, they get all upset. I mean, I don't get it, except that this is the 11th commandment. I'm violating a fake commandment. It is bottom line, and I'll wrap it up with this. This is a tradition of men. People are nullifying God's word. They are making God's word of none effect so they can have their tradition. Thou shalt not name names. Thou shalt always be polite. She'll never say anything negative about Billy Graham. These are fake commandments, not in the Bible. Here's what the Bible actually says test the spirits. So anyone who comes to me with this, unless you have a biblical argument, unless you have chapter and verse and a specific thing that I said wrong and you can show me in scripture, you, my friend, are putting tradition above scripture. So I normally don't rebuke uh, the audience here, <laughs> but consider yourself rebuked if you have some complaint about what I'm doing, because what I'm doing, I firmly believe is totally consistent and in line with the apostles of Jesus Christ. And if you don't like it, you can unsubscribe and I will lose no sleep over it. Thank you for listening. Until next time, may the Lord be with you. Have a great day.